Wow, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bart Coppens from the Atlantic Rainforest in Brazil, where I'm doing some moth trapping. A giant moth just showed up to my moth trap. It's an amazing species from the genus Rosilia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. My attempt at making an insect trap. Will it work? Let's find out, I suppose. Wow! This is the result of my insect trap. This is just too amazing, guys. Oh my god, look at these unusual species. But Bart, why are you doing this? My name is Bart Coppens and I study butterflies and moths professionally. That's right, kids. It is my job to look at moths. Talk about a dream job. I'm helping to make a list of the local species in collaboration with a natural reserve. And today, I want to document and photograph unusual species of moths in the Atlantic rainforest of Brazil. The Atlantic rainforest is one of the most deforested rainforests in the world. And many insect species here are endangered or declining. And we don't know anything about their biology. And this is why I'm here to help. I'm collecting information about moths. I'm making a list of the local species of silk moths, hawk moths, tiger moths and other groups of macrolepidopterans. This information could help their conservation. I identify as an insect conservationalist. I'm also the owner of the biggest and dare I say the best YouTube channel about butterflies and moths. Making YouTube videos about them is also my job. So that's two birds with one stone and it turns out my job is the same thing I like to make videos about of course, so let's get started. Hey lovely babes, thanks for tuning in to this educational video. This is my moth trapping equipment and I'm bringing it into the mountains. Let's go! This here, by the way, is Lola. She's an elderly Brazilian lady and also a biologist. She invited me in her mountain cottage to study insects and this is where I'm staying for a few days. Lola is not her real name, by the way, because I respect her privacy. It's actually a high altitude mountain cottage. Thank you for letting me stay, Lola. The altitude is about 1000 meters, so it's highland in the mountains in the area of Nova Friburgo in Brazil. Let's go! 
how to make a moth trap. Well, today I'm going to show you how I set mine up, but I'm going to warn you, it's going to be a little bit amateuristic because I need to improvise a little bit today. Being left-handed, it's not easy, folks. How does it even work? Come on, cut the rope for me, please. Please, cut the freaking rope. Man, this is so annoying. Come on, just a little bit more. Should be careful, these scissors are extremely sharp. Yes, a little bit more, please. That's what she said. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh my god, my scissors broke. Come on, aha, I got it. Yeah. I hope this holds up. Shoot. Ah. This is the dangerous part. There you go. Maybe should be a little bit higher. You know what? I should lose some weight. So this is a special light. It's a Mercury Vapor light bulb. It emits a lot of UV light and the UV spectrum is what mainly attracts insects. I, have, I hope I have enough rope to make it to the other side. Next we need some kind of white sheet. The insects will be attracted to the light, but they need somewhere to land. Second of all, a white surface will also reflect more light into the environment, which is also good. Let's see if this even works out. Maybe not. Maybe it will. Oh god, it's so bad. Oh well. Oh, of the setup. I, I was going to see I see a star but it's a plane. <laughs> I think it will be good enough to attract some nice species. Even though professional entomologists are probably sitting here laughing at my attempt, it should be okay. At least for me right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moth trap seems to be attracting about a million wasps. Not kidding. Here's the moth wall. And here's a nice big saturnet I should take a picture of later. Oh, it's going... Never mind. I'll fetch that one later. And here... Just a crazy amount of wasps. Damn. Now take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like the light has attracted a giant grasshopper. These grasshoppers in Brazil are some of the biggest that you can find here. Take a look at how big. Woo! There it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have to wear protective gear because the light trap has attracted hundreds and hundreds of wasps. And I already got stung five times. I didn't film it, but it happened. I even got stung on my chin, on my hand, my wrist, my back. So I had enough. I had to exchange my t-shirt for something wasp-proof. 
It's horrible. It's terrible. Now, people, I'm not trying to let the insane amount of wasps ruin my night. But I'm, I'm gonna be honest, they already ruined it a little bit. This is not fun, this is just dangerous. And if you come close, they sting. I got stung five times and it hurts. Look at how many fucking wasps. Oh my... Sorry for swearing, I'm a little bit bitter because this is just nonsense. Look how many wasps! I never asked for this. This is just stupid. Man. And I have to walk past that to get some Saturnids. That really sucks. But we do have some awesome Saturnids on the sheet. So let's swim in the ocean of wasps to get the good moth. I'm too scared to touch this sheet with my bare hands. Like it's just coated with freaking wasps. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. If we turn it around though, there's a bunch of really, really nice Saturnid on it. I'm, I'm afraid to touch it, like this, just too many wasps, you know? Can we do it carefully? Oh, but here's a nice Saturnid. Two of them. Oh, we have an Imperial Moth. That's beautiful. Oh, did the wasps start flying? How do I get these moths off without getting killed by wasps? Okay, so while I stand the risk of pissing off hundreds of wasps and ending up in a fucking freaking hospital, Sorry for the swearing, I'm a bit stressed. Let's scoop up the nice Saturnids that we have here. Come, quick. Quick. Oh, oh God, get out, get out, get out. Ooh. Oof, that's... Ooh. Oh, God. First of all, we have a fantastic Imperial Moth. What's interesting about this species, this is probably one of the most widespread Saturnids in the world. Because this species, you can find them all the way from Canada all the way to southern United States, Central America, the Amazon, tropical regions, even down the way here in the south in Brazil. And I think they're even found in parts of Argentina. So this, this Saturnid here, I don't know how they did it, but this Saturnid basically covered the, uh, and almost the entire American continent from Canada to tropical jungles. And in here they have several awesome subspecies, so it's, it's funny, it's interesting to see one. By the way, this is the first imperial moth I ever caught in the wild. I raised this species before in captivity, but it's the first uh, time I see one in the wild. So it's my first imperial moth on the moth trap. I should do a moth cycles episode about this species, by the way. Can't believe I haven't done it yet. Maybe in this year, who knows. Oh yeah, we're getting started. This is the large first silk moth that I found and it's an iconic one. It is the Imperial Moth. Yes, you can find these all the way in Brazil. Aeacles Imperialis. This species is interesting because it has a huge amount of subspecies and it's found in Brazil, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Belize, Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Panama, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, French Guiana, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, Colombia, Western Ecuador, the United States of America where it's in New York, the Eastern United States to the Great Plains and even Canada, for example in Quebec and Ontario. Hmm, did I forget anyone? For me, it is personally crazy to imagine that there is a silk moth that can be found all the way from Canada down to the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil and even Argentina. The secret is that they have about a dozen different subspecies that prefer different plants and different climates. So right now we are actually looking at Aeacles imperialis magnifica. The Magnifica subspecies is unique to southeastern Brazil, Argentina and perhaps also Paraguay and Uruguay. Here they feed on avocado trees, coral tree, guava tree and more plants. They are beautifully camouflaged though like a large leaf. That reminds me for some reason. I haven't filmed the life cycle of this species on my channel yet. Maybe I should do that soon. Now take a look at this ladies and gentlemen. Looks like the light has attracted a giant grasshopper. These grasshoppers in Brazil are some of the biggest that you can find here. 
Take a look at how big. Woo, there it goes. Whoa, it's a giant grasshopper. Now that is really crazy. Whoa, in the tropics, grasshoppers can get huge. I swear, I could put this one on a leash and walk it in the park. This is called Tropidacus castata, or the giant red-winged grasshopper. Now, why is it called the giant red-winged grasshopper? Because it is giant and it has red hind wings. Wow! Thousand IQ commentary. Thank you, Bart Coppens. Very insightful. Seriously, though. It's said that the red wings are a warning signal that perhaps could scare away predators. Or could be an aposematic signal that let predators know that the grasshoppers are unpalatable or noxious. Whether that's true or not, I am not sure. I'll let the grasshopper experts of YouTube tell me about it in the comments. Either way, I'm very happy to see this. I came to Brazil to study moths. But if there's other interesting insects that show up to my insect trap, I'm going to make close-ups of them as well. Wow, this is a very unique silk moth that has never been on my channel before. This is why I have to travel, people. It is just impossible to film some species in captivity. This is Cerodervia rosa cordis. This is what I would identify it as, which is a species of Saturnidae. In South America, there are many types of silk moths that will roll themselves up and display their colorful abdomen to Im intimidate predators. And usually they have abdomens with cute stripes on them that are yellow, red, black and white and other variations of colors. Cerodirphia rosa cordis is, according to my sources, endemic to central and eastern Brazil. It seems that very little is known about their biology, unfortunately. The next time I visit Brazil, I would like to try and breed them. My breeding experiments can help the environment because it helps us understand the life cycles of moths better. Ignorance of their biology and life cycles is in fact an existential threat to the conservation of insects. And this is how my channel helps insect conservation by documenting these unknown things. It appears this specimen is a female, which is more rare than finding a male. Their color is beautiful, it is a pale, creamy pink almost as if it's blushing, combined with the contrasting black, white and yellow rings on the abdomen. To me, moths are tiny works of art. Whoa, this is one of the prettiest hot moths that I have ever seen. I love everything about its appearance. It's a dragon sphinx moth. Let's make a close-up of this one. Surely it deserves to have one. Allow me to introduce you to Hemeroplanus longistriga. It is found in Brazil, Ecuador and perhaps more countries. It differs from all the other species of Hemeroplanus by the very long silver mark on the forewing upper side and lack of yellow bands on the upper side of the abdomen. Thank you. Once again, not much seems to be known about her life cycle. Hmm. The rainforest is full of thousands of insects, of which we know and understand very little. That is why I came to Brazil. Hopefully I can contribute some knowledge. This species doesn't have a common name and I'll be honest, I just literally made up the name Dragon Sphinx myself. But honestly, I'm not sure why, but everything about its appearance seems to be dragon-like to me. Maybe it's the streamlining, the sharp edges and the way it folds its wings when it's resting. 
It's almost as if it's taking a nap before waking up and deciding to eradicate the dwarves and steal all their gold. Can you see it too, or am I just crazy? Oh my god, a giant Rosilia! A giant Rosilia! I'm so happy! I am so happy, la la la. Let's hope it stops. So, this is the way Rosilia fly. Um, it's literally coming toward me. It's, I hope it nicely lands on the sheet. You know what? I'm not even mad about the wasp stings anymore. Because this is fantastic! Oh my god, it's so big. It's a huge Rosilia. It's so big. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. Despite all the wasp stings I had to endure, I think the moth gods are looking uh, down upon me and smiling. Because I just received in my moth trap a giant Rosilia moth. These moths from the genus Rotsilia can be some of the biggest moths that you can find here. They're absolutely fantastic. They kind of look like a small atlas moth and they have these borders in their windows that are transparent. Can you see how transparent? You can see my finger behind it. They uh, are really fantastic moths. Now the genus Rosilia is uh, found from even the southern United States where you have um, species like Cincta that slightly cross the border into the United States. More commonly into Central America and South America where there's dozens of species. To see Rosilia moths you generally have to go to rainforest. They like mature forest so you do usually don't see many Rosilia species. This is a generalization. Because the biology of each species is very different. But you generally don't really see them in uh, places where there's uh, development or reforestation. They, need, uh, they usually would like a good forest cover. Which we, which we have here in this area. In uh, Novo Friburgo in Brazil. What a fantastic animal. This is a male. The female is even bigger. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason you want to send me to tropical countries, because I will travel the world and show you the rarest, coolest, most unusual insects. I have all the time to do it. Now let me get a close-up of it and reveal what species it is. Oh my god! Trapping a wild, giant Rotsilia. It's always been a dream of mine. Another dream coming true. This right here is Rotsilia hesperus. This beautiful and very orange species of Rotsilia is found in Venezuela, Ecuador, Guyana, Suriname, French Guiana, Colombia, Peru, Brazil and Argentina. In southeastern Brazil, where I am right now, it even has a special subspecies. This is Mothrosilia hesperus betis. Recognizing this species is easy, because they are very orange, where other Rostelia tend to be a little bit more brown. It is distinguished from moths in the Uritsiaba group by the entirely white prothoraric color in Hesperus. It seems that this species is more common in the highlands than the lowlands. Perhaps it is inclined to fly at higher altitudes. Don't forget, right now I'm on a mountain. My current lay location is about 1000 meters in altitude in the mountains. The markings on the wings are very intricate and beautiful. The shade of orange is truly unique. It's almost as if this moth had a badly done spray tan. Dang, I hope it doesn't run for president. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bart Coppens from Brazil making a video to show you a cool moth I found in the rainforest. 
Now what's cool is that this is the female and the female we haven't seen so far. This is also a species I would really love to breed. However, it's highly illegal to take eggs from the rainforest to the Netherlands. You really need a permit to do that. And it hurts my heart to leave this insect behind really. However, I would love to educate you about its biology instead. Let me tell you what it is. Oh, hey look, it's the female of Proceteronia principalis. That's interesting. This species is endemic to the Atlantic rainforest and can be found nowhere else. This species seems to exclusively feed on the plant Croton or Croton floribunda to be more specific in the highlands. It is often found around, around higher altitudes in Brazil. It's a species we had in the moth trap before if you watched all my other videos, but if not, maybe this is the first time you're seeing it. It is a really gorgeous fiery orange species. But what's even more interesting is this specimen is a female. Females of silk moths are a little bit more rare on average. So statistically, there's a lot of males that you'll get, but this is the first time I'm actually seeing the female. Very beautiful. Remember the name, Procetonia principalis. Wow, this is such a weird moth. It looks like some giant, giant notodontid maybe. That's fantastic. We make a close up of this one. Wow, have you ever seen such a big notodontid? This is crazy, huh? Did you expect moths from this family to be able to grow this big? I am also surprised. This is practically a giant puss moth. Its name is Amnuralcampa mingens. And this species seems to occur mostly in southeastern Brazil in the Atlantic rainforest. I'm not quite sure if it's found in Paraguay and Argentina too. There doesn't seem to be a huge amount of data on the species. I am happy to announce though that the life cycle of this insect is in fact known to science. And now what I'm about to say is not a joke, but I think the caterpillars of this species are the most beautiful caterpillars that I've ever seen a picture of. And trust me, I have seen many caterpillars. The host plant of this species seems to be Pleroma mutabile, an evergreen in the Melastoma sea family. Although I do suspect maybe they, find on more sp they feed on more species of Melastoma sea. Wow, just look at the picture of the caterpillar of Anurocampa mingens. It's amazingly gorgeous. They're bright, almost lime green with blood red speckles all over its body, bright blue feet and yellow markings near its butt. The photographer of the larva is somebody called Edson Roberto, by the way. Not me personally, I don't take credit for the photo. Some individuals also seem to have white markings instead of red ones, perhaps a different instar. I have some good news. Next year I'm going back to Brazil for six months. And when I do, I'm going to try and find the caterpillars of this species. I don't know if I'm going to succeed, but it would be amazing to breed them and film the life cycle. Unfortunately, females seem to be very rare at the lights. So far I've almost exclusively found males. Stuff like this is what the sexy moth king needs to keep his channel relevant and interesting. What the hell? A giant white silver moth with a pearlescent shine. Uh -oh.
I'm going to be honest. I know how to identify a lot of species, but definitely not all of them. This thing is a mystery to me. I'm going to call it the angel moth, because it's quite big and silvery white. Quite angelic looking. Hmm. I suspect it could actually be some kind of giant micro lepidopterum if I'm not even mistaken. If anybody is watching my video right now and you recognize this species, then please contact me, drop a comment or simply just email me. I still need to identify this species later for my research, so if somebody knows the name it will actually help me. It seems to have a very shiny white silver metallic gloss. For this one, I'm going to need the help of my fans and viewers to identify it. If anyone can identify it for me, I would be super grateful. It would also help my research, which is to make a list of the local species of insects. Do you have any idea what species this angel moth is? Hmm. Interesting to see though. I see a lot of big Saturnids. Oh my god. A second species of Rothschildia has arrived. This is perfect. This is one of my best nights so far. Oh my... No! Please don't get stuck there. I should get rid of the wood next time. And the wasp. No! Don't go in there. Fantastic. It looks like it could be... I can't get, get a close look yet. Oh my god, another Rostelia. I have to get a net. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I think we recognize this one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Some Saturnists just don't sit still until you catch them with a net. I want to catch it. I don't want to risk uh, the thing escaping anyway. This could be complicated due to all the wasps. Try <coughs> trying to make my life difficult. Yeah, that was a wasp. Man, why did I have to choose a place with so much timber? Here it is. Huh. Come on. Come on. Man. Come on, this should be easy, right? This should be easy. Come out, moth. Damn. It's getting itself stuck between the wood. Come on. Yeah, 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 come. Haha, ha, I gotcha. Great, I've caught it together with like 10 wasps. <sighs> Let's carefully get it out. But not the wasps. Ah, fuck. Ah. Fuck. Ah, for God. God, it's the wasps. Oh, that was a stupid idea. The net was full of wasps and I scooped them up and I stuck my hand in it. I'm such an idiot. How many wasps are there in there? Oh my God. It's full of wasps. I'm so stupid. Ah. Oh. Oh God, one of the wasps got me again. Can you see this on my finger? This spot, oh God. Oh, that hurts. That's a wasp thing. God, that's wasp thing number six. How many stings can I take before it gets dangerous? God. All right, can you see this spot on my finger? This is where it got me. Bastards. Ah, oh, God. Oh, this is getting so frustrating every time <sighs> my hand feels numb
this is bad. My finger is really thick and swollen right now. You see, I can't even close it. This is bad. I think it's a bad reaction. This one got me really good. Look at how big my finger is compared to the rest. Oh god. I should cool it down with cold water and get some... Uh, maybe some afterbite or ammonia. Look at that. This is bad. Oh god. Damn it. Look at that finger. Yeah, I should uh, go back for a second. Get something to eat, get something to drink, take care of this, the swelling. And then uh, I will go back to check up on the moths. Those of you who have trouble believing me, look at this fucker trying to sting me. See that? It's trying to sting my vest, but it can't because the vest is too thick. And these fuckers, they just don't let go. Like, they use their jaws to just hold you. And they don't fucking, they don't let go. Sorry for swearing, people, it's ruining the video, but... I'm a little bit frightened by these things. They, just look at how ferocious it is. It's so determined to try and find a place to sting me. It's kind of probing his abdomen. Using his jaws. Thankfully I have my vest. I literally got stung five times tonight. It really hurt bad. Like, I hate these things. I hate these creatures. Sorry. I just don't like you. Alright, I just received my sixth thing. Let's put the moth back. Let me tell you guys something about moth trapping in the tropics. It can be fascinating, it can be amazing. You can get the world's rarest and coolest insects. But it attracts a whole lot of wildlife. And sometimes it can be dangerous. Actually, there's a lot of species of wasps. Uh, bees, hornets and other stinging insects that can be attracted by the light as well. And if you're as unlucky as me or you just happen to place the lamp near where perhaps there is a wasp nest hiding in a tree somewhere then at night then it's possible to be flooded with hundreds of wasps and bees and uh, sometimes you get stuff like stinging flies there's a whole lot of crazy stuff that can show up at the light, you know? Giant bees, carpenter bees, stuff like that. So, ah. Kids, if you ever want to moth trap in the tropics like Bart Coppens, bring protective gear. See, I have here something in my throat. This protects the wasp from crawling in and stinging my throat. Because if you get a swelling in your throat and you're allergic, it can be deadly. You have trouble breathing, you can go to the hospital, you can go in anaphylactic shock. So uh, we should be very careful. And this night I have, this is my sixth freaking sting, I'm getting frustrated. Now one or two wasp stings, it hurts, but it's not too bad. But if it's like 10 or 20 stings, you can get sick. So I'm, I'm starting to get worried. Have to stop getting stung. But there's just so many wasps, you know. This work can be so satisfying, but also frustrating and dangerous sometimes. You're in the tropics, don't forget, you are in the home of wild animals. Now that really hurt me guys, and my finger is all swollen. But at least I got myself a nice Rotstelia in return for all the pain. And this right here is Rotstelia bellis. And this is a species that's only known from southeastern Brazil. Espirito Santo, Rio de Janeiro, Parana, Sao Paulo, Santa Cateria and Rio Grande do Sul. It is kind of a moth that resembles another species of Rotstelia that I filmed the life cycle of once, but it is a different species. Some people suggest that this species is also found in northern Argentina. The moth itself is beautifully carmine red, with slender wings and intricate markings. It's like a flying piece of art, to be honest. Feast your eyes on it. The caterpillars of this species are also beautiful and feed on many plants in the wild. 
Some sources suggest they feed on several Rubiaceae, Araliaceae, Rosaceae, Myrtaceae, and perhaps more plant families. But I need some more confirmation on those sources. This moth is a male specimen, and males have smaller rings than the females, and a smaller ring surface area. Just look at how many the light has attracted. Like they're all over the walls here. Sometimes they're getting all in my clothing. So when you want to study entomology like I do, be aware of the danger. See all these wasps here. And I notice how one of them made me scream in pain already. Now imagine Imagine if I walk in here and that I fall in this corner between all the wasps. Yeah, that, that would be hell. That would be hell on earth. So, I guess I want to say take your precautions when you're working in the tropics. You know, you are, you are in the environment of dangerous animals. Spiders, scorpions, wasps, bees. Of course, mosquitoes who can make you sick, stinging flies. There's a whole lot of stuff here, even deadly caterpillars with burning hairs. You are in the jungle. You are in the home of wild animals. Now, some of the stuff here in the trap is just fascinating. Some of these moths are extremely beautiful. I'll identify them later, make close-ups for my research. Look at that. You know, but never forget the danger because half of these things here are... They're wasps. Like there must be a nest here somewhere. You just have to be careful with catching any of this stuff. Because there are spicy wasps all over the place. Oh well, now you guys know how hard working I am to bring you guys entertainment on YouTube. Oh, this is a beautiful one with white stripes. You know? Perfect, very pretty. Oh, this one looks like it spent a lot of time on Twitter. Oh, what's that? I was paranoid that it was another wasp. Whew. Oh, here's a very nice one. Look at this. We should be careful. We should be really careful. I don't want to get sting more times, because it's, it's starting to get dangerous, you know? If you get sting like uh, 10, 20 times, 30 times in one night, you can get into, you can get into a shock reaction, and this is very dangerous for your body. Oh, man. On this YouTube channel, we learn about nature together. It should be both educational and entertaining to inspire more people to learn about insects. And today we have the opportunity to learn something new. So let's answer the question, why are these wasps swarming the moth trap? And what species are they? Let's start a quick segment about them. Let's cut back. This is Apoica palens, the Central American paper wasp. Now this species is common in the rainforest in tropical America. And the most important thing you need to know about them is that these wasps are nocturnal. This explains why they are attracted to the lights at night. During the day, in fact, they sleep on open nests hidden in the vegetation. The good news is they tend to sleep during the day, so they don't really bother anyone, unless you disturb their nest. Disturbing their nest is a very bad idea. The nest can be small, but can grow to very large sizes in some cases, containing hundreds of wasps. This species is rather common, and it has developed a special night vision adaptations to facilitate their nighttime swarming and foraging behavior. 
Now, their nest tends to consist of just a single comb hanging under a branch. Foraging takes place almost exclusively at night and is characterized by the large numbers of wasps explosively departing from the nest and then quickly returning only to depart again in a similar fashion. As the night progresses, there are moderate to heavy levels of return and departures by smaller groups of wasps. Apoica balance has also been found to collect various uh, arthropods including flies, caterpillars and beetles. But it also collects pollen and nectar from particular types of flowers at night. So I guess that does make it a pollinator as well. Although they are more carnivorous than they are interested in flowers. But it is an interesting fact. During the day they are inactive and protect their nest by resting in a formation. They don't bother you much during the day unless you are accidentally disturbing the nest. In the rainforest it's important to tread carefully through the vegetation since you don't want to accidentally disturb a nest with hundreds of angry wasps. Because they fly in swarms in the middle of the night, these wasps are bad news to moth trappers. If you're unlucky, your light bulb can attract a whole swarm. This is dangerous because the insects do sting and attack in numbers if they feel threatened. This is why I got stung six times per day, one time on camera and five times off camera. Moth trapping in the tropics can be dangerous because you'll attract giant bees, wasps and other other crazy kinds of animals. Last but not least, I apologize for some of the swearing and bad language in the video, sorry guys. Although I don't really make content for children, and I believe kids need to be super supervised when watching stuff on YouTube anyway, I do try to be a little bit inclusive and family friendly if I can most of the time. It's just, it's hard not to use vulgar language if you're being stung by wasps over and over. Sorry guys, it was a little bit of raw emotions. Ah, another new Saturny day that I have never filmed before. Bingo, baby. This beauty is Dirfia fornax. It flies in southeastern Brazil. Espirito Santo, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Parana, Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul. The moths are in the wing in January, March and October, suggesting three broods annually. Interesting, nothing seems to be known about its life cycle and biology. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't believe how many moths I encounter every day in Brazil, of which pretty much nothing is known about a life cycle. It would be very interesting to obtain eggs from a female and to breed it. This could reveal new information to science. The moths have dark and grey tones, but are no less beautiful than any colourful species. They are also one of those silk moths that roll up their abdomens when they feel threatened. This kind of looks like a species of Citeronia, doesn't it? But actually, this amazing silk moth is the Adelo Valkyria Eugenia. It seems that this awesome species with a banana peel like camouflage is found in French Guiana, Panama, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia and Ecuador. Most species of Adelo Valkyria seem to feed on Fabacea plants from the family of peas, clover and honey locusts for example. Think of plants like Acacia, Mimosa, Albizia and other related plants. Interestingly, there doesn't seem to be too much information that's known about this species in particular. Could it be that this is yet another one of those silk moth species of which we don't really know much at all? Man, it seems to be a trend here in the rainforest. It just goes to show how little we understand most of these creatures and their life cycles. Every time I see a cool moth, it turns out most of their life cycles are unknown. All in all though, it is another incredibly beautiful species of moth. One of the main families of moth that I study are the Saturnidae, and this one also happens to be one. It is important to research the local species in southeastern Brazil. Why? Because I am currently in one of the world's most deforested rainforests, 
the Atlantic rainforest, and it's still declining rapidly. Imagine if species like these disappear before we even get to understand them. That would be a total tragedy. The Katie that ladies and gentlemen is eating one of the moths. Can you see it? It is literally eating one of the moths. Rest in peace moth. Oh these Katie that's are highly predatory of course. Ladies and gentlemen, what do I see here in the back? This is a Saturnid, believe it or not. A very long one, Luxolomia. Fantastic. Oh my god, 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 this, my friends, is a dream. I always wanted to see this moth in the wild. Meet the species Loxolomia serpentina. And this species in particular is endemic to southeastern Brazil and maybe also Argentina. Loxolomia moths are absolutely beautiful. They look like an animated piece of tree bark. They have very elongated wings and the, the shape and their camouflage reminds me of a broken stick. They seem to have about two broods a year and seems to be more common in the highlands than the lowlands for sure. The host plant of this species is a tree called Cariniana from the Lekitidacea plant family. Aha, I never even heard of that family before. The larvae are quite unusual and snake-like. Sadly, this specimen rubbed off some of the scales and hairs of its back and abdomen when I was filming it. Turns out this piece does backflips on the floor when it's stressed out. It still is, however, one of the most beautiful moths I countered in Brazil, despite its imperfections, and a personal favorite of mine. It's like a buff tip moth on steroids. Yes, I know those are in a different family, but you catch my drift. The Atlantic rainforest is where I am today and the Atlantic rainforest is one of the most deforested rainforests in the world. About 85% of the Atlantic rainforest has been lost to deforestation sadly. And if we don't do anything to protect it, we may lose amazing species like these. Oh hey, it's this species again. I've shown it to you before in this video. Last time it was the female, this time it is the male. I'll keep it short and sweet since we've already seen this species. This is Procetoronia principalis and tonight it was very common. I actually found over 5 males and also one female. Here's some quick close-ups. They look like a plushy toy. I must say the marking on their wings kind of reminds me of the eye of Sauron. I see you. Ah, uh, I think we got it ourselves a Lonomia. You guys know those Saturnid with deadly caterpillars? That's them. Let's take it for a for a nice highlight here. Oh, come here, Lonom. Oh no, it's wasps. We have to run. Those of you who ow. Oh. Oh wow, another amazing silk moth! And the night is just getting started. There are so many species of moths tonight. It's probably one of my best nights here. 
These are special and tiny species of silk moth that look like dead leaves. But let me tell you what it is. But first, a message. If you are someone enjoying this video right now, I want to tell you the following. I put a lot of effort in my videos. I've gone so far as to travel all the way from Europe to Brazil to film cool insects for my fans on YouTube. I however don't make any money from the videos I upload through YouTube. Why is that? That's because YouTube demonetized my entire channel. The only way I can do fun and crazy things like travel to Brazil is because people donate to my channel. This channel is 100% crowdfunded and the generous donations of my fans are the only reason I could afford the flight tickets to Brazil. Without the donations or help from my fans I would never have been in the rainforest to film insects for you right now. And this is how I fund my channel and even some of my own research. And with more financial support I can produce thousands of videos like this one. In many countries too. I would love to see the United States of America or India or Indonesia or Malaysia, Australia or French Guiana and many more places where I want to film moths for you and other insects. But I cannot do it without crowdfunding. YouTube does not pay me for my work sadly. Just something I really wanted to throw out there babes. I have to bring some attention to it. Okay, let's proceed. Now these are not easy to identify. It is a Perigha species, but in the genus Perigha there are over 80 species that have been described and a lot of them look similar to each other. Not to mention low quality taxonomy has made it even more complicated. Anyway, I'm going to give it my best shot and say this is Perigha circumstance. And if I am correct, which I am not sure that I am, but if I am correct, this species is found in central, eastern and southern Brazil and also northeastern Argentina and Paraguay. Interesting! The caterpillars of this species are said to be ferociously venomous and feed on many types of plants. Oh hey, guess what this species is? It is another male of Perigia circumstance. This Saturnid moth actually varies a lot in color. They can be yellow, orange, brown or grey. Awesome isn't it? I love variability in silk moths. Let's admire it a little before we move on. It is in a very nice position. Indeed. Ah, this one flew away quickly, so I only have a few seconds of footage to show you. This tiny eeny mini little sphinx is one of the many Niceric species that are found in Brazil. Small, but fantastic. Wow, another Saturni day. The wild silk moths are plentiful tonight. Allow me to introduce you to what I believe to be the male of Serodirfia vagans. 
The species, according to some sources I found, flies in Brazil. Rio de Janeiro, Parana, Sao Paulo, Santa Catarina, and Rio Grande do Sul. Yep, seems to be the same states. And in Argentina, Misiones. That, my friends, makes two species of Cerodurfia in one day. And yes, this species also has the same thread pose where it shows its colorful butt. And once again, it seems not too much is known about their life cycle. Or maybe it is and I'm just not aware of it. Usually I am aware of it though, if something is known about a Saturnidae. These small silk moths are honestly some of my top favorites because they have really cool and colorful abdomens. It's cute how they curl up into a colorful ball of fuzz. Wow, now this right here is a truly very remarkable tiger moth. I would identify as a Symphlebia lophocampoides. Hmm, the bright yellow and orange colors combined give it a very bright and fiery appearance. Symphlebia can actually be difficult to identify in some instances since over 65, sorry, 56 species of them are described. As far as I can see in the records, this particular species is only found in Brazil so far. Hmm, or maybe my records are a bit lacking. Curiously, very little information is known about her distribution and life cycle. Why am I not surprised? Planet Earth is full of amazing, colorful, fascinating and important creatures that contribute to the environment in their own unique ways. And about most of them we don't know anything. Including this one. Which is a shame, because ignorance of their biology is an existential threat to insects and their conservation. Now guys, one thing I do want to say is from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you to all my viewers and subscribers. You guys, you guys have made a dream come true. And that is to do real conservation work and be in a real rainforest, you know. All my life, I wanted nothing more than just to see a real rainforest with all its beautiful insects, all its beautiful, magnificent creatures that we are seeing right now. Like the moths that we are, have seen are out of this world, their shapes, their colors, their sizes. I don't even mind the wasp stings, to be honest. Like, it's a completely mind-blowing, life-changing experience. It's also a dream I almost gave up on, you know. Since I was young, I wanted nothing more to contribute to entomology, to study insects on some level. And I've always almost felt like it was impossible, like I wasn't smart enough, you know. I had to find my own way to do it through social media. And it's also you, all my viewers, all my fans, subscribers, it's because of you that I'm here, you know. It's because of YouTube and my success on social media that this collaboration happened. Wow. Thank you to everybody who supported me. Thank you to Rob. You know what you did for me. Not gonna say it, but you know what you did. All of you collectively, everybody watching, yes, you, even if you are new on this channel, it changed my life, you know. And at the same time, I am where I wanted to be. But I also want to, I also feel like it tastes like more, you know. Imagine if you had a channel where you could just travel the world and document all the species of moth there or insects and promote the environment, promote nature and its importance. Um, it just ties into everything I love doing. Thank you guys. I wish young Bart Coppens was here to see me right now. Hi everybody, it looks like it's going to be one of my ugly face videos again. Oh my god, that haircut. Those serial killer vibes. What was I thinking? You know what, I'm, I changed my mind.
I'm glad that young Bart Coppens isn't here right now. I was kind of like Buffalo Bill, wasn't I? <laughs> Come a long way. Hey, let's take a look at more moths. I think I saw another uh, nice pieces show up. Hey, remember when everybody was talking about a series named Squid Game? which became popular out of nowhere? But suddenly the hype died down and nobody is talking about it anymore. Anyway, I tried to watch it, but it was really cringe. It felt like there was a lot of overacting and the way the adult characters behave and convey emotions is more appropriate for high school. Not to mention the way the series tried to criticize capitalism. Yes, we all know the current system is unfair, but it felt like low-hanging fruit. Yes, we all know inequality is a bad thing. And no, repeating that fact is not very profound, sorry. It's a very obvious truth, everybody can make a show about that. It's not some deep as hell truth bomb. You're using characters that behave like teenagers to convey very toothless, a nurtured form of criticism. Oh wait, we're talking about moths, aren't we? Oops. If some of you think this piece of looks familiar, then congratulations. You don't have a memory as short term as most people on social media, because in this very same video, I filmed this piece before. It's Rosilia Bellas for the second time. But this time it's a female. The difference is that the previous Rosilia Bellas I showed was a male. Now you can see both the male and the female in the same video. The funny thing about Walsilia moth is pretty much all of them are very easy to breed and popular in the silk moth breeding hobby. Females will lay eggs very easily and I must say, I'm very tempted to take eggs of this female and to breed them. But unfortunately it's highly illegal to take insects from Brazil to Europe. Therefore I will do no such thing. I do want to keep my integrity as an entomologist and I want to follow the law and obey it as much as possible. I do not condone smuggling. Make sure you get your pet insects legally or you can get in a lot of trouble. Alright people, despite the many many wasp stings and pain I had to endure, I'm really happy and optimistic. This is so far the best moth trapping night I've had in Brazil and that's saying something because we had some really cool stuff before in the moth trap but this is the best night so far we have so many hog moth so many saturnid I haven't seen before it's just an explosion of really cool species tonight I'm very relieved you guys may remember that I made one video complaining that it was slow and that I was hoping to see more. This is compensating for the slow night that I had. You know the night in which there were almost no Saturni day. This is fantastic, this is, this is what I dreamed of. Alright, most of this stuff I already showed you. Are we wasp free? Yes, we should be. Okay, let me show you. It's the risk of being stung. Here we have the awesome Rostilia. Already showed some of you guys. Pro Citeronia. See? There's two large Saturnids together. That's great, isn't it? Two of them together. But there's more. Here's the Aeaclis Imperialis I showed you. A beautiful Imperial moth. Some huge hog moths still have to do the close up. Another poor Ceteronia. These are really common this season. Fantastic.
Here's the Rosilia I showed you guys. Still going strong. That's pretty cool, eh? two species uh, of Ceteronia in one night. Now, here you should be careful, this is where all the wasps are at. Don't want to piss those off. Get stung again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Oh, here we got ourselves a really fantastic tiger moth. Some kind of a hippocampa, I think. It's really big too. What a beauty. I should take this one later for a close-up. Just look, look at the biodiversity here, it's crazy, huh? This pink one is also a Saturnid. I showed it to you before. So many Saturnids. This is a really good night. Oh, look at this tiger moth. Fantastic, fantastic. Such color. Such color. And such beauty, eh? This is why we love moths, people. Here's a really nice hog moth. I'm gonna take it later too for the close up. Fantastic! Kinda looks like a fighter jet, eh? Huge Katie did. So rich in insect diversity. Oh, this is everybody's favorite geometric moth. I think it's Pantoides, right? I believe the caterpillars of this species they feed on Passiflora. This species would be so easy to breed. To be honest, a lot of the moths and butterflies here are breedable, but it's illegal to take anything from Brazil without a permit. So we're not doing that. I'm working with professional entomologists here. And I don't want to embarrass them by smuggling. So we're not gonna take anything from Brazil. We're just going to enjoy this stuff in nature. Oh, I found a new Saturnid I haven't had yet. It's a very small one. I think it's a Dirphiopsis. Dirphiopsis multicolor maybe. I'm gonna take this one right now and make a close-up. Wow, this is a really, really, really small Saturnidae silk moth. I determined the species to be Dirphiopsis delta. Once again, pretty much nothing seems known about their life cycle. How curious. It's a really tiny and awesome Saturnidae moth, however, and it also has a thread pose where it curls up its abdomen in order to intimidate onlookers with their colorful butts. Are you intimidated yet? Just look at these amazing and fascinating creatures of the earth. This adorable ball of hair doesn't get any attention from anyone except a handful of moth lovers like me. It's a shame, it's such a shame animals like these are so underrepresented and forgotten. But I vow to bring all these animals into the spotlight the way they deserve. Next year I will go back to Brazil for 6 months and when I do, I hope to investigate the life cycles of animals like these. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the sun coming over the horizon. The sun is coming up and this is marking the end of the moth trapping night. But not everything is over yet. I still have a few nice moths that I want to show you. Well, people, that was fantastic. But I think it's time to slowly bring down the sheets. And release all the moths back into nature. Be free, my friends. Be free. Fly away. Otherwise a bird will eat you. Quite a lot of Procetoronias tonight, eh? Fantastic, what a fantastic experience. I'm, I'm so happy to be here in Brazil. I wish I could do this all my life. I would. I would devote my time to it. I'm that crazy. Look at it, it's perfect. 
Oh, it's already morning and the sun is coming up. We have to be fast and go to bed soon. Let me quickly show you some cool moths I found on the sheet in the morning. There also appears to be an incredible lichen mimicking Katie did. Just look at that, it's probably going to fly away right now. I don't care though. Just seeing it for a few seconds makes me happy enough. What a fantastic animal. You just wonder how camouflage this thing is, you know, when it's actually sitting on some lichens. That's fantastic. Wow. So this tree here has actually some lichens growing on it. Let's do the camouflage test. Eh? Alright buddy, let's place you here. Oh my god. That totally works, doesn't it? That totally works. I mean, let's be real, that is just some fantastic camouflage, yo. I wonder if this piece is also each lichen, lichen, lichen. How do you pronounce it in English? I don't even know. Fantastic. Look at his eyes, his body, it's so perfectly adapted for this micro environment. That's so neat, I love it. Wow, that's a beautiful katydid. It's known as a lichenomorphous. Turns out I pronounced the word lichen wrong my entire life. I used to call it lichen. I'm from the Netherlands, okay? I'm not a native English speaker. Oh yeah, yeah. That's so crazy, yeah? Now you're more visible. And now I'm about to get lazy with the identifications, guys. Why? Because it's late and I really want to go to sleep. I'm just cleaning up the equipment, cleaning up the sheets and dismantling the moth trap. And during that process, I'm still finding moths to show you. These moths, however, will lack a proper idea because I'm feeling tired at this point. If you can identify any of them for me, though, I would be super happy and grateful. I would love it if my viewers recognized the names or at least the genus of some of these moths because I'm too tired to keep going. Moths are living works of art. Their size, shapes and colors are like an open book that we can read and use to deduce things from the environment. Moths are poetry, but not everybody can read it. And I am here to translate the poetry of nature. Just look at these magnificent, beautiful and delicate animals. Wow. Identify some of them for me, if you can. Some kind of a me Maloney day I haven't identified. Yep, yep. Now, when cleaning up the sheet, most of the moths, they are flying away. That's, uh, it's important to let them fly away, otherwise the birds will come here and eat everything. But some insects will stay behind. And some of the insects that stay behind can be interesting. Let me show you some. A very cute hawk moth. I didn't even notice before. It seems that this piece is found in Brazil and Bolivia. It's also really gorgeous. It's like wearing a bunch of striped pyjamas. Ain't that crazy? 
It's Eumorpha Translineatus. The sun is coming up and I have to go to bed soon, so I'm gonna do this fast. But I even discovered an Automiris I didn't notice before. It was hiding in the bushes near the light. Allow me to show you Automiris bellinia. It is found in many countries such as Brazil, Colombia, Bolivia, Suriname and maybe more countries. This should be a special subspecies restricted to southern Brazil too. Bellinia tamphilus. The caterpillars are venomous and can eat many types of plants. And this right here is a blum blum. Just kidding, in all honesty, I wasn't able to figure out what species or even family this weird moth is. I'm still working on the identification behind the scenes as we speak. If anybody recognizes it, please write an ID suggestion in the comments. Before that time, I'm just going to call it a blum blum. Leave a comment or email me behind the scenes if you know this species. A giant hog moth? Nope, it's a colax. A giant noted daunted moth. Hey, you've seen this one before. It's the same dragon sphinx I showed you before. Why not? Because now I have some daylight. The sun is coming up. Wow, this moth is really amazingly beautiful, dudes. Take a look. It's Phaegoptera depicta. And this moth is found in southeastern Brazil. Once again, I can't really find much about her caterpillars or houseplants at all. Honestly, I'm getting a little bit tired of the fact I'm meeting so many awesome insects and yet I cannot really tell you much about them or give you insightful commentary because nothing is known about their biology. What I can tell you though is that tiger moths are often toxic. They contain toxic compounds known as alkaloids and the moths are often very brightly colored to advertise this fact. So predators think twice about eating them. The colors on this species are out of this world. I love the yellow golden spots intertwined on the creamy white background contrasting with their bright red abdomen. It's also a huge piece for a tiger moth. It's really, really, really out of this world. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was pretty much it. Good night. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Maybe it's better if I do it like this. Bah. 
Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to sleep now. See, behind me is a bed. This is the place where I'm going to sleep tonight in Brazil. It's late and we saw some awesome moles. If I wake up tomorrow, I have a special surprise for you. Shh, we'll see. Oh. oh, Mr. Oh, Christina, what are you doing to me? I thought you put me in a friend zone. Oh, is this really happening? Oh, 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 oh sorry, I must be asleep. Good night, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. What am I doing here in Brazil anyway? I'm collaborating with a natural reserve named Regua to make a list of the local species of moths. And they sponsor my work as an entomologist. And they want to know what moths live in the area. And I'm working on collecting this information. Did you know, at Regua we also do reforestation. My channel promotes the reforestation of the Atlantic rainforest, one of the most uh, deforested rainforests in the world. Now that is a good reason to support my channel, isn't it? Let me show you the tree nursery that we have. My name is Bart Coppens, a traveling entomologist on social media that studies butterflies and moths and cares about the environment. Today I came all the way from the Netherlands to Brazil to help out the restoration of the Atlantic rainforest one of the most deforested rainforests in the world. I joined a wildlife conservation and reforestation effort named Regua. Here, as a volunteer, I am helping and trying to draw awareness to this project on social media while researching the butterflies and moths in the area and showing you the coolest insects on YouTube to draw awareness for them. Behind me is a tree nursery. Can you see it? Wow! Here the volunteers are growing thousands of native plants, trees and shrubs. These trees and plants will be planted in areas that were reforested, so the forest can be restored. And hopefully these little baby trees that I am holding here will one day grow into a major rainforest and will be able to restore the environment and all the plants and animals that were once lost due to human influence. However, it is difficult for me to do this. My YouTube channel is completely, permanently demonetized by YouTube. And YouTube still refuses to tell me why. What I do is expensive. Traveling the world is expensive. And I don't make money, not a single cent, from any of the videos that I upload. Therefore, I want to remind you, this channel is 100% crowdfunded. The donations of my fans, viewers and supporters are what enables me to travel the world, go all the way to Brazil and help with reforestation and conservation of the environment. If you like the show, if you like what I do, consider donating to my channel. There are several options available in the links in the description. There's Patreon where you can buy a subscription, there's PayPal, there's Ko-Fi, there's many ways to send me a payment. All the funds I raise online will be used for the production of more videos, for my research projects on insects and nature, or to draw attention to wildlife and conservation projects like Regua, here behind me. I'd love to show you more about it on YouTube, so subscribe and check out my other videos. Of course, I'm not entitled, you don't have to give me anything, and it doesn't make you less of a viewer if you don't, I'm only reminding those who are willing and those who are able to donate. It's not an obligation, you can enjoy the stuff, of course, for free. I enjoy all your comments and viewership. 
This was Bart Coppens. I hope to see you again. Hope to see you next video. Bye bye. Shout out to my wasp friends who made my life more difficult today. I hope you enjoyed it. I worked hard on this video, both in real life, taking a whole night to film it, and behind the scenes. A video with so many species is a beast to edit. But together we learn about nature and how awesome it is. Let's help spread the love, guys. But my channel needs more visibility. If you enjoy my videos, I may have a request for you. Go to my channel and copy and paste the link to your favorite video that I have ever uploaded. Then share the link in your favorite subreddit, image board, group chat, Facebook group, Discord, Tumblr or WhatsApp. It doesn't matter where. This will cause many new people to see my videos and maybe some of them will like the videos and subscribe. That would be great. Don't forget, the bigger this channel grows, the more cool insects I can film for you. Help spread the love for insects. Secondly, my YouTube channel is demonetized. I don't make money from my videos through YouTube. That by itself is not a huge issue, but it does mean that my creativity is limited. Listen, the reason I became a YouTuber is to make other people passionate about nature and insects. Not to become rich and famous or whatever. But the truth is, I need budget to do crazy fun stuff. Traveling to Brazil to film rare moths falls under the category crazy fun stuff. This wouldn't have happened without the donations and contributions of my fans and followers. It was the only way I could afford the flight tickets to Brazil and fund this expedition into the rainforest. It's actually super expensive. And with your help I can do even more. Imagine me visiting the United States of America to film moths and butterflies there. I would love to visit Florida, Texas, California or New York and film rare insects there. How about the rainforest of Malaysia, India, Australia or Papua or Indonesia? You get the point. But those things can never happen without a crowdfunding, because YouTube does not pay me for the views my channel gets. Don't get me wrong, man. I'm certainly not entitled to anything for making entertaining videos. This message is only for those who are willing and able to support me and who see value in my mission and the things I make. Please help yourself before you help others, especially random YouTubers. Think of it as buying a subscription to Netflix or Disney Plus to watch movies like many people do. People who buy a subscription on Patreon also receive special rewards and exclusive content, so check it out. Hopefully, it will also give you the warm feeling that you help support a creator that films all the videos that you enjoy watching. On top of that, the funds I raise online are used to collaborate with natural reserves who do conservation and reforestation and to research and study insects. You'll also be sponsoring an independent entomologist that promotes insect conservation. I even asked YouTube why they demonetized my channel and to this day YouTube refuses to answer this question. They don't even want to say what rule or guideline I violated. That's really painful after literally making over a thousand videos. Now sorry for bringing this stuff up folks, I wish I didn't have to do this. But it is how I have managed to keep this channel alive for years, by drawing attention to crowdfunding. It's hard to do what I do in a capitalist world and with a demonetized channel. Last but least, if you are still here, thank you so much for watching. I have some great news. I'm going back to Regra in Brazil in the future to film even more species of insects. In fact, I'm going back for six months next time, which almost is half a year. That's a crazy amount of time and there's going to be a lot of rainforest content. Bye bye guys, I love you.